Uh, at this time, I'd like to uh, welcome everybody to the July uh, 31st, 2014 agenda. You got it uh, wrong here, Chris. It's, uh, it's August. The original, the original date. Okay. <laughs> this was the original date for the meeting, but changed cool. over to uh, Yeah, to today. All right. Could everybody please rise and join us in the salute to the flag? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Huh? Yeah, well. <laughs> you an intern? Try to tell them how things work around here. <laughs> okay, uh, ag agenda item number one, John, I just want to, until the uh, chief gets here, we'll wait for uh, number four. Okay. Uh, the first item on the public hearings is to amend Schedule 11 of Title 10 handicapped parking areas by inserting them in the following locations. 679 Winthrop Ave, 210 Prospect Ave, 133 Adams Street, 152 Park Avenue, 86 Wade Street, and 785 Winthrop Avenue. Members, Chris? I went to all these sites here, and each one of these here qualify, with the exception of 152 Park Avenue, but it has a narrow driveway, so it might be an exception. I have a picture of it here for you guys. To the side, you guys want to do it. It's not really up to, up to standard. It's on a, a blind corner on the corner of um, Yemen at Park Avenue. And why? They want a handicap in front of the house. Right. Yeah. This is the public hearing for the handicaps. For the approval. These are the ones we narrowed it down to. Right. Oh. We, we eliminated a couple already. Oh. And uh, this is, of all these here, they pretty much meet the requirements. This is, there's, um, how wide? Is, yeah. How yeah. wide is the driveway, driveway, Chris? How wide is it's, it? It's not. It's, uh, looks about. Ten feet wide, eight feet wide. That's all it looks. Yes, that's not wide enough to take a, a walker out of it or a wheelchair if you had to get out of it. And it's, it's a blind, blind spot coming down Park Avenue, right at the corner. Do we know what the dimensions are and what they should be for a driveway handicap driver? No, but the handicap's plus twelve feet wide. Okay. Did you measure it? I didn't measure the driver. No. Okay. I think we approved them all pending the. Uh, the measuring of the driveway, if it doesn't meet the standards, then that one will be approved as well. Second. Do I have a second? Aye. Nay. The, the ayes have it. All these locations have been approved. Item number two will be to amend Schedule 4 of Title 10, isolated stops by signs by inserting in the following locations. Uh, location is uh, Moretti Street, southbound traffic at Oakwood Avenue, and southbound uh, traffic at Oakwood Avenue on Case Drive as well. It's already been done. This was something that was brought to the traffic commission for the interest of uh, public safety on the people, on the children who live on Oakwood Avenue. There's no stop sign the entire length of uh, Oakwood Avenue. We went down there and uh, they were exceedingly traveling fast there, especially when school was letting out and parents were trying to get their kids in. So, um, what are the wishes of the commission? Second. Ayes. The ayes have it. Motion is approved. Uh, this is item number three, and this is to review the traffic pattern in the area of North Shore Road and Charmett Street. Council Powers.
thank, yeah, there we go. Thank you very much. Mr. Chairman, members of the commission, uh, I'm here today uh, with regard to Charmant Street and North Shore Road. Uh, as you know, there is a uh, playground on Charmant Street. Uh, currently, the way the traffic pattern is set up, cars uh, looking to bypass the Revere Street light can come out of the MBTA parking lot, across onto uh, North Shore Road, onto Charmant Street, and shoot up uh, uh, Sagamore Street. I think, uh, I, I mean, I've seen down there myself, uh, a lot of people are getting out of work, they're in a hurry to get home, uh, they're rushing, uh, a little kid could be coming out of a playground there, and that playground is used uh, quite extensively by the neighborhood children. Uh, there could be some serious injuries down there, or uh, even worse. So uh, I'm opposed to uh, any uh, situation or arrangement that would allow traffic to come out of the MBTA parking lot and go across North Shore Road to over Charmant Street and up to Sagamore Street. Uh, it's not even a question where residents use that parking lot down there uh, for the most part. If not all the time, residents down there walk to the MBTA station. So uh, that's not an issue. Uh, if the traffic commission can come up with a, a suitable solution that works, uh, I would have no problem with that. But uh, I would like to keep the, uh, the no left turn on off of North Shore Road and the uh, northbound lane uh, onto uh, across Charmant Street up to Sagamore Street. I'd like to keep that in force. And I'd also like to have the uh, traffic coming out of the parking lot, uh, across North Shore Road, onto Charmant. I'd like to have that uh, strictly enforced as they do not enter. Uh, the only, uh, if any, solution I could figure would be uh, if there were to be a right turn uh, off of North Shore Road, the uh, southbound lane, uh, onto uh, Charmant Street uh, to uh, benefit the business there. Again, I'm not opposed to the business, but I think public safety is much more important. And uh, whatever you fellas can come up with, I'd really support, as long as it doesn't interfere with the tra traffic. Thank you. Will. Thank you, Council Powers. Would members of the commission at this time like to weigh in on this matter? I've been in contact with the state. They want the, the more traffic going 
uh, southbound because now what's happening, that's additional traffic that would have to go northbound and make a U-turn at the next light, and it just congests the traffic even more. So they're not going to change that traffic pattern. I've already spoken to, with them. They, uh, at, one t at one time that was closed off, but now that they have the parking lot there, it's open and it's going to remain open. And the thing that they're concerned is, is with the signalization and the loops that are in the street there, that once the city of Revere makes a decision on the way we're going to go, it, they're never going to reverse that traffic signal because they have to coordinate it to uh, just allow the, the cars to come out and, and not worry about the traffic loop that's on Sharma Street that's going to be allowing cars to go in and out to give them the so. It's, it, it has a lot to do with the loops, and once they take them out, they're not putting them back in. And uh, so whatever the decision we make here today, it will be final as far as uh, Mass Highway is concerned. Yeah, do you want to? And, and the real issue is that people come in there when they see do not enter, they don't come anyway. Yeah, they won't go anyway. Right. And the, the issue that you had brought up as you were sitting there is we, tr we try to do that like we have at Walgreens on Frontwood Avenue to prevent people from going into the neighborhood. Not in, you're allowing the traffic to come into the neighborhood if you, if you do that. You know, we, we, we like the traffic pattern to go away from the neighborhood. You start once, because once they start flowing in off of Nausea Road, where are they going to go? They're going to either use your parking lot as a U-turn. It's, it's, it's a difficult, it's, it's a difficult you know, dilemma. It's been like that for years. The only issue was when they parked the MBTA parking lot across the street. Right. And so people are using it as a cut-through. I understand. Rush <laughs> but at the same time, I think Council Powell is... Uh, He's done his homework in that area. He understands the public safety issue that is presented to the, the kids in the neighborhood. The only other option you would might have is going back to Mass Highway and relocating the curb cut on North Shore Road that will allow you to come into the parking lot off of, off of North Shore Road and then exiting out of the parking lot in the natural... The problem is, John, the building is in the way, and it, it doesn't allow them to really access, so they'd have to apply. Right. You, you have to, you need to talk to Mass Highway about that. Well, I did, and there's a, there's a, there's a regulation that said you have to be so many feet away from the uh, intersection. And then you also don't have a queuing lane there for slowing right. down of traffic. Right. right. I think it's like 75 feet from the center from the center of the road. No, I I got some aerial views here. I don't know if you want to. Yeah. Well, I have some signage too. I had some signage drawn up, some possibilities. Well, no, this is not to the state. This is. Which one is it? Is it on? Okay. Doesn't have to be all those signs. It was just like a combination of them. Or
just to go in, I just wanted to <coughs> had an idea. Maybe we could do it on a trial basis for six months and see what see what happens. Excuse you know? me, I need to weigh in. Public safety has to come first. I agree. First and foremost. I, I, I don't see a viable option at this point. It's either got to be public safety or convenience of operations of a business. And oh, to me? No, I think public safety should come first. That too. comes first. But on the uh, other and hand. And I'm pretty adamant on that. Yeah. on that stance. Uh, I, I don't want to see a kid get run over by a car, I don't period, for the no. sake of business. No, that's not why I'm here. I'm just, I'm just trying to come to some sort of compromise. Because like I said, we've been, my family and I have been out of business for 50 years plus. And uh, it's just going to be devastating. I want to do we want to do not enter but further back on the on on Shawmet Street Do not enter Sagamore Street Somebody pulls down that corner comes across they come into this pocket Yeah there's no way They to can't go. go straight they can't go right where they going? They, well, so they, 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 they're forced to make an illegal U-turn on a two-way street that becomes a one-way street. Is that what you're telling me? Well, I was saying on the, on the, on the other side of Shawmet Street, I know we put a do not enter on Sagamore, but on the other side of Shawmet Street, we could put residents only. So they can go down Shawmet Street, but residents can only go down Shawmet Street. And I don't and, know if that's enforceable or not, because if you stop them and ask for their license, if they don't have a... Address right, so there. that's next to nearly impossible to enforce. I'll, I'll, you I'll can't, let you, you know. can't enforce that. Oh, I can enforce it. I can post a police officer there all day, 24-7. It's enforceable. It's expensive, but it's enforceable. The only, the only real option... generally do that the, the, for, the, for the opposite reason, to get people out of the neighborhood, not into it. Again, uh, my position is, is clear. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, the public safety of the neighborhood is paramount. Uh, if there's another solution that can be worked out, and I have no idea what that might be, uh, other than perhaps uh, going to Mass Highway uh, and getting permission to move that curb cut on North Shore Road down 8 or 10 feet. Uh, I don't know. I don't know the regulations of Mass Highway with regard to traffic patterns, but I know that Charmot Street is a city street, Sagamore Street's a city street, and I don't think we should be allowing cars but coming through there and racing up there when we've got a playground there that is frequented uh, by kids in the neighborhood. I, I mean, it's just, it's crazy. Somebody's going to get hurt. And that's, that's my position on it. The marble and stone company. They'll be going through the neighborhood. Yeah. No, no. There's a, there's a marble. My company. My company is in the back. Yes. The whole, the whole property would be croaked by that. I don't. I mean, I don't even know if the store is going to go in. If the store doesn't go in, then I might have to take the whole thing back and do it again.
You could be grandfathered into it as well. It's a possibility, but I agree with that. If it's going to, for the sake of public safety, if we're going to make it do not enter, it's clear cut, concise, do not enter. We've had time restricted do not enters that don't work. We've had, you know, halfway down the street do not enters, and well, if, for instance, firm would have, we just keep kicking that can down further and further down the road. That doesn't work. Uh, for the sake of public safety, I'm in favor of the, just a do not enter. Okay, so I have a, a, a motion before the commission, amendment before the con Give him time. Six months. Excuse me. Well, Six what he's. Well, I think we're kicking the the can down the road again, as Joe had said. The, the issue is either we're going to allow it or we're not going to allow it. We can give it a temporary do not enter for three to six months to see if he can be successful with Mass Highway allowing him to enter onto their property from North Shore Road. In the event that that doesn't happen, we're right back here to square one in the same position we're doing right now. So, I mean, I have no objection to, to you know, to putting the signs up for three months or six months to see what they can do. Uh, it's just, it's just, we'll be back here if he's unsuccessful then the signs will go up. If he is successful, that the signs will stay up. I mean, so it, it really makes no difference. It doesn't work. It never works, Gene. And it's not enforceable, right. And then what happens is when uh, there's accidents that take place, the insurance companies get on because it's, it is or it isn't. There's no part time do not enter. That's that's the issue we always come up with. We have them around schools for protection when schools get out and there's one on on uh Fernwood Avenue that we probably changed fourteen times in the last five years that I've been up here. So that in itself proves that they don't work. And those are the ones that we use to get people out of the neighborhood, not into the neighborhood. And this would be bringing people into the neighborhood. So that's that's the it's a it's a tough location, uh, you know. Obviously, if if the MBTA didn't put that parking lot across the street, we would most likely we wouldn't be having this conversation right now. Is there any way to talk to the state as far as painting some left turn only and right turn only signs and putting a red light, just a green arrow one way? There is a red. Arrow? There is a light there right now, and allows them to come across. But it's green. It's not a green arrow. It might be a green arrow going well, if it's left, a, green arrow going right. That's not, up to, that, that's not up to us to do. You have to do that. We're not going to. We don't engage Mass Highway to change their, their regulations. And they, they, they're the same with us. Mm -hmm. Just like when you made, whoever made the call to take the signs down because they were within the right of way. That's why we're here now, and the signs will go back up due in the interest of public safety. That's, that's what we're here for. We're here to protect the residents. I understand the dilemma. It's, I wouldn't want to be in it. I, re I really wouldn't. I, There's got to be know. something we can do, though. You're just going to destroy my property.
Yeah, if you can come in. Yeah, there's a, you move it over. Does That's happen. correct. Yes, he does. It's right in front of the building. It used to be for a garage. Years ago. Well, they gave me the regulations, and they said uh, you have to be so many feet from an intersection with your curb cut. And I think it was 75 oh. feet from the center of the street. Did you did you explain to me you had an existing uh, curb cut there? I told them I had an existing curb cut, yes. Um, Peter Gafter, I think his name was. Gaff Gaffter. No, he's in um, Arlington. Arlington. Yeah. Arlington? District 4. That's, yeah. that's what it is, yeah. Instead of, Johnny, is, if, is it possible to put up a, a do not enter sign on Sagamore Street temporarily? Instead of putting that do not enter sign on Shawmus Street right now. So the people who live in the neighborhood that go down to visit the neighbor can't go back up Shawmus Street to go home? What do you mean can't go back up, Sean? I don't understand. You live on Naples Road, John. You go down to see a constituent down on Dunn Road. You come back down to the Sharma Street. You can't take a left on Sagamore. Well, I think the chief kind of explained the whole situation. And, 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 and listen, I, I sympathize. It's just that public safety comes first. That's always been the way we've conducted this, this hearing is that no matter what we do, there's an issue because you either allow them to go up into the city streets, which we don't want to do, or make an illegal turn. So in, in any event, it, it just doesn't seem to work. I mean, you guys are trying to work it out there. I mean, would, Joe, you deal with this more than anybody. I mean, I, and I just... Well, and Nick's got a good point. Yeah. When they built this, when this was engineered, right. obviously the parking lot was designed to dump right across the intersection. Correct. Had they moved it in either direction so it didn't line up with the street, we wouldn't be having this problem here. So th this is... If it was farther uh, north, I agree. Either direction. Right. Farther north, north or south, south, they could take a right and go left, because if the thing, cause it still would still be open. Oh, you mean north or south of the, the street? When yes. it was designed, the right. welfare of the residents was not taken into right. consideration, clearly. Right. You know, so now we have this. Right. Now we have people that utilize this parking lot are generally not residents of the city. But they're cutting through, to avoid that Revere Street light, they're cutting up through the neighborhoods to, to bypass it. Correct. At the peril of the people that live there, who didn't sign on for this when they bought their, their houses. So I think our obligation is to the residents. Nick. Well, this was supposed to be a public hearing, but a do not enter. I don't know how it got wrote up like that. Um, and school opens next week. And hello, uh, I'm representing the neighborhood. Uh, you know, I don't want to be uh, portrayed to be the bad guy here. I'm not. No, I agree. As the chief said, this is a matter of public safety. I've supported that business down there several occasions, uh, putting up a, a signage there that indicate delivery zone only, and at one point we even abandoned a paper street to give them more flexibility what? in that uh, marble business. So I'm not against business, but I have to, in all good conscience, 
as a representative of the neighborhood with a playground right there, stand for those people. Thank you. Okay. I agree. Is there a motion on the floor? Second. All those in favor? Ayes. The ayes have it that do not that the signs will go up. Right. You have to go back to Mass Highway and see what you can work out with them on a grandfather clause. So. Question. The, uh, we're going to write it up one way from Sagamore to North Shore Road. It's do not enter because there's no do not enter. No do not enter in the city ordinances themselves. So it's a one way or two right. way. How are we going to write this up? It's it's a one way coming out. One way coming out from Sagamore. One way from Sagamore to North Shore Road. Coming out. All right. Yeah. Okay. You're just going to make it a one way. Yeah. So that my whole business will be a one way. Basically, the whole entrance. Well, you can get into your parking lot from Sagamore, can't you? Put the, 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 the yeah, but I would. Th what, yeah, well, I wouldn't put it all the way to Charmin. You he's put it right at Nasha Road. Just can't. It's just a do not enter from from the Nasha Road side. Like, he's right. I think that's doing a little bit too much there. Huh? Chris, we have nine thousand do not enter signs in the city. Huh? So it's a one, it's one way from the park lot out. Put, put you, yeah, you just write it up from the, 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 the first apartment building out. That's the way to do it. It's a section. It's a, it's a section of uh, Sharma. You don't. You can't do that to them. Okay. All right. So uh, item number four uh, to amend schedule. Nine of Title Ten parking permit, uh, parking by permit only, by inserting the following locations: Pleasant Street Southerly uh, from Broadway to Hyde Street, uh, Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Hyde Street both ways, Broadway Legion Building rear entrance, Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. And this will be effective on September 1st, 2014. Parking. Yeah. And Frank, that's all going to encompass the, the park behind the Legion building? Yes. Okay. We have a... Yeah, it says effective until September 2000. Makes no sense. Chris. It should be effective as of September. Right, Frank? Okay. <laughs> okay, we'll just make a, a notation. Uh, that it's effective on September 1st of 2014 in lieu of until. 
All those in favor? The ayes, the ayes have it. We'll go to request. Request for handicapped parking at the following locations. 29 Steeple, 63 Kimball, 100 Witten, 27 German, 38 Page, 144 Rumney, 38 Walnut, 33A Sagamore, 51 Victoria Street. Chris? Order to a public hearing. Yeah. You, have you looked at any of these yet, Chris? Yeah. So they're all set. So we eliminate. Uh, 36, yeah. It's two cars packed in the grass. Those that are deemed eligible will be ordered to a public hearing. Do I have a second? That's a late, so you will do it pending the public hearing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Do I have a second to that motion? All those in favor, aye. The ayes have it. Item number three, Council Order number 14, slash 138 by Council Guanasso to revise Schedule 9 of Title 10, handicap parking by inserting the following location, 20 Beach Road. That was already approved at the uh, two meetings ago. Somehow the paperwork came through again to us. Okay. It's already been approved to go up there and at least the wealth case, right. driving around there. So that, that's it. already been taken care of. Item number four is Council Order 14 dash. 117 by Council Regal and Powers to conduct a public hearing for the purpose of discussing removal of no parking signs on the section of Tuttle Street that is south of Revere Street. Council Powers. Thank you, Mr. Ch Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I've had calls from uh, some residents down there that uh, uh, I guess traditionally for years they've been parking on both sides. Uh, it isn't something that's uh, enforced. Uh, that frequently, although sometimes it is. Uh, I would be in favor of allowing parking on both sides if, in fact, uh, we could get emergency apparatus down there. That would be up to the chief to determine. 
uh, I would have no problem with uh, removing the uh, no parking restriction. Because uh, that area down there is changing. There's a lot of new families moving in. A lot of people have cars today that didn't have cars before. And uh, I think it would be a convenience for the neighborhood to remove those signs. Again, as long as emergency apparatus can uh, get through there with parking on both sides. Thank you. We have a motion to order to a public hearing. Second. Ayes, the ayes have it. Item number six, Council Order 13, 158, by Council Guanasso to revise skip. No, I didn't. Oh, I did. I'm sorry. Item number five, Council Order 14, 115, by Council Redden to conduct a public hearing on a petition to institute overnight residential parking from midnight to 8 a.m. on Page Street and Olive Street. What are the wishes of the commission? Do we have anything on the books for that uh, overnight residential parking? I wanted to call me by the wayside. And I get, I'm, I'm getting phone calls every day from the, the residents down there also, along with the ward councilors, about the, the parking. I don't know where the cars are coming from. I think complain about. They, 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 you know, they, they complain that it's, it's Page Street packing over and all of all of packing over on Page Street. It's, they're all local residents. It's just the um, the number two and three family houses over there right now, in the apartments that are flooding the streets. They want packing for Page on Page and packing for all of on all of. The, the, the way they do it now, you have to actually live on the street, and if you don't, they, they can tag you. Uh, it's been the past practice of this commission to only do it in areas that are affected by the public transportation, around the T stations. What's the motivation, Ronnie? Just, just the, the, there's so many cars in the neighborhood? Is that it? Is I, there some I'm, other? I, I'm sure that uh, Councilor Redden was getting inundated with phone calls from area residents. And I think uh, also a lot of these phone calls may be coming from, and I don't know how it impacts it because it's at night, that um, that new daycare center might have something to do with, uh, you know, parking. Yeah, it makes no, right. Well, the, not to the extent that they'll probably need for all the children, but, but that's only pick up and drop off, so I don't see that being an issue. The calls I'm getting at the station, mainly nighttime calls, the overnight, right. after, after midnight, the people coming home from work late, right. trying to find a place to park in the street. Well, I th the so I, I think based on Council Ridden's motion, I think that we owe it to him just to conduct a public hearing so that the residents can come up and he can come up and uh, express the, the sentiments of the, the local residents. Do I have a second? Aye. The ayes have it. Item number six. Is Council Order 13158 by Council Guanasso to revise Schedule 8 of Title 10 parking restrictions generally by instituting one hour parking at 843 Broadway in the corner of Broadway and Folsom Street adjacent to BW's Grill? No, but if I'm, not, if I'm not mistaken, a couple of years ago we put the two hour pack in on Broadway, on the opposite side of Broadway, but it, never, it was never posted up over there. So if you want to look at that, look at that there first, if you can find the paperwork on that, on the two hour pack in on Broadway first, and then we can entertain this here at a public hearing? Yeah. Okay. Motion to a public hearing. All those in favor, aye. The ayes have it. Item number seven is 14 100 by Council Novoselsky and Powers to revise Schedule 4. Four of Title 10 isolated stop signs by inserting, uh, inserting a stop sign at the intersection 
of Shirley Ave and Walnut Ave for eastbound traffic. I think that, yeah. We already have a, we already have a, a traffic signal there. Yeah. And there's stop signs on Walnut, not on Shirley Ave, but there is a, a, a blinking red yellow at the intersection of, uh, yeah. He wants a total stop on Shirley. Why? Motion to order to a public hearing. Second, I ayes have it. Item number eight is a cup. Skip. Uh, okay, number eight has been taken care of. Number nine is a request by Nick Fantasia that a no parking here to corner sign be put in the eastbound corner of McCleavy prior to the driveway at 74 Randall Road. Or Rand Street. We basically want to know an old park ahead of corner 25th intersection. From where? The intersection of um, Rand and McCleavely. I guess making the corner over there. The car's back on the corner itself. He's trying to get it posted up. He's one of the officers that works the neighborhood. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, sir. This is just a good formalities for us to yes or no. Yeah. It's already there. You can't pack it in the second 20 feet. It's already state law. Okay. It can be tagged, towed, whatever. Okay. Okay, so all those in favor, eyes, the eyes have it. And this is item 10 to amend Schedule 8 of Title 10 parking restrictions generally by inserting the following locations. Uh, 500 Park Avenue and the type of parking will be two hour parking from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday. Uh, I believe this is being instituted so that the dentist can uh, run a business uh, location there. Been there for a, forever, yeah. Yes, on at 500 Park Avenue. How many spot, parking spots is that going to affect? Because I know there's a bus stop there as well. I, I believe I believe it's just uh, probably two, right around two spaces. Daytime hours, two spaces. Yeah. There are residents there as well. I mean, is it going to affect Yeah, they can them? park there at night. They can park there until late in the morning. So I see a proof. Yeah. yeah. All those in favor? Aye. The ayes have it. Okay. Oh, we have to order it to a public hearing because it's a change, Chris. So I have a motion to uh, send this to a public hearing. All those in favor? Opposed? The ayes have it. Number 11 is request when Schedule 5 of Title 10, one-way street by adding Cambridge Street, direction to be determined at a public hearing. Who's requesting this, Chris? The residents of Cambridge Street called it. I told the residents of Cambridge Street that they should have. Move it to a public hearing. All those in favor? Aye. The ayes have it. Item number 12 is a request through Council Janino from the residents at 476. Six Prospect Avenue to review the no parking restrictions on that section of Prospect Avenue. I went to the um, that area. I guess there's no parking on the northerly side of Prospect Avenue. The person at 476 trying to get parking 
on that side. If we park on both sides over there, can't get by. you won't get a fire truck through there. Right. And the person at 476 has access to parking in the rear on Heisel Avenue with a fence back there also. So I tried to explain it to the, the people, and I told them to put it up for a public hearing for you people and uh, see where it goes. But I, I, I looked at it, and I don't see possible to Me put I looked at two-sided it. parking over there. I've looked at it a couple of times. If you had to get a ladder truck down, you wouldn't be there on the corner. Right. We'll order for a public hearing and give the residents the uh, opportunity to express their sentiments. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. The ayes have it. And item number 13 is a request from Sergeant Gino, Gino to amend Schedule 4 of Title 10 isolated stop signs by adding T. Carroll Way from northbound traffic at Reservoir and Reservoir Avenue at T. Carroll Way for eastbound traffic on Reservoir. Council Gin, uh, Sergeant Gino. I received a call for some traffic enforcement up in the area. I went up there and those signs are up on the poles. They are in the area. This is just to clean the books up. The signs are already there. Okay. So we're not adding any new signs, and we're just okay. cleaning the books out. So we need to add it to a public hearing and then vote it in at the public hearing? Yes. All those in favor? Aye. The ayes have it. And this is a request from Councilor uh, Zambudo to have the Traffic Commission review the current city ordinances regarding overnight parking for commercial vehicles. It appears we're having commercial vehicles from other cities coming to review at nighttime. Um, I guess Chelsea, Everett, Winthrop, they have no parking between midnight and 5. Commercial vehicles are parking on our streets in Revere and the neighborhoods, and they're living in Chelsea and Winthrop. This, this, is, this is basically the um, three-quarter ton trucks with commercial place on it coming to the city parking. They pick up trucks and vans. It's not the one tons. I have a council order for the area of uh, Vane Street surrounding neighborhoods for enforcement of commercial vehicles. Unfortunately, when we look at the ordinance, it doesn't include the vehicles in question, which are, like the sergeant said, there are uh, commercial vehicles from other cities that, that parking them overnight, up to half a dozen of parking overnight, going home to other, to other cities. Exactly. What is this? You realize you could park your truck in my neighborhood and go back home to Malden. In the morning, you're coming in parking your car. Well, let, let, let me say this much. I don't think the people are parking in uh, Revere and walking back to Malden. So it suggests to me that somebody it's there that, at that location is, has some type of relationship with these people, either commercially or through a business. I mean, I just don't see uh, one particular address, four or five trucks getting dropped off and, you know, all going to separate communities. It did, yeah. So, um, yes. Well, I think obviously you need to get a hold of Comcast and tell them that. Uh, well, listen, uh, they won't get no work from uh, from Comcast if they're not. Uh, yeah. Because you're, you're going to open up a can of worms here with this, because there's not a guy that I know that's in business for himself, that don't have a three-quarter. I mean, we let them get away with a three-quarter ton. Now you're going to do all commercial vehicles? That means anybody that's in business for himself with a small panel van, even a, uh, is, a, is, is a livery plate considered commercial? I mean, you know, you're opening up a can of worms here. I mean, I think we should look into it and, uh, you know, see what we can come up to. So... You know, for the for, for the sake of the council, let him have his opportunity to come up here and speak. Um, we'll order it to a public hearing and let the people from uh, Main Street come up here and, and tell us basically what's going on up there and what we can do to help them. Right. Well, then anybody that's in business would have to have a commercial plate so their insurance purposes wouldn't. Uh... Right. Yeah. So, I mean, I used to have three. I mean, I kept them on my own property, but I, you know, I did have three. 
but there was not, and they were only half ton service vans. So that's all they were, you know. So I think we should order it to a public hearing and have councilors and board come up here if, if it's something that's a problem just relative to that area. Then we need to come up with a solution to resolve it for him. And the first step would be ordering to a public hearing. All those in favor, aye. All those opposed, the ayes have it. Order to a public hearing. That's it. We have a motion to adjourn.